Okay, it's uh, one minute past five. I'd like to call this special meeting of the select board to order on October 23rd at five o'clock. Any additions and deletions to the agenda? Um, I don't have anything. Mm -hmm. Citizens comment on anything that's not on the agenda. So I have a citizen comment from someone who couldn't be here, but it deals with the Woodstock Aqueduct. So I'm going to wait until then to read that if that's okay with the board. And I just have a quick uh, thing I'd like to read. The Woodstock Select Board condemns the theft and destruction of the pride flag at the Prosper Valley School over the weekend. Acts of, aid, acts of hate have no place in our community. If you have any information, please contact the state police of the Prosper Valley School. Thank you for that. Next up is the river project discussion. Um, so the select board, I got sent a um, bunch of projects. Um, there was some feedback by a few members. I sent them over to two rivers. Um, they have a representative here. If there are any more questions you have about those pr projects or anything else, you provided some time to answer those questions for the board. <clears throat> um, and I won't take too much of your time. Um, I introduce yourself, please, for the record. Oh, Kyle Katz with Two Rivers Auto Creature Regional Commission. Um, I know you have a lot to get through, so um, I'll be quick. I know that Kevin Geiger's already uh, gone through the list with you all um we're essentially looking to have the engineers that um, we're working with to start on conceptual designs to check and see if some of these projects meet bca um, we don't want to send them to look at certain projects if they won't ultimately have the support of the town um, so the goal is to get a sense of projects are supported in which um, might not be so we can uh, target their efforts accordingly. What's the time frame? I mean, this is all grant applications, correct? Yeah, it's all HMGP grant applications um, through, uh, it's all part of the river project. So our timeline, we, well, it looks like we need to get um, the application materials together by the end of this year. So by the end of this they need to start up right away. Right. Do we have any questions or concerns? No. Have we seen the list? We've seen the list, yeah. From Kevin presented the list yeah. last time yeah. and then we gave feedback on that. So we're excited. Yeah, great. The only thing I've said is that uh, Elm Street Bridge is ideally being bonded after a positive vote on the, on the 10th. So that's something to take off if that vote happens. Yeah. <clears throat> Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Next up is the salt bid award. Yep. So we went out for a bid for salt. Um, <clears throat> only two companies put in bids. Uh, and only one of the companies uh, provided uh, a bid for their treated salt that we use. Um, that's Cargyle. Um, so we recommend that the select board approve uh, the salt purchase going to them. Cargill. Eric, Tim, Blue, anymore? Uh, that's absolutely only, only two bids from them and another, yeah. yeah. Is there a motion to accept the salt bid? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the cannabis license approval, Sun Kiss Farms Incorporated. Uh, so they're here. Um, I will say, as always, I'll explain two things on this. One, um, that the authority is so highly researched by the states um, that really uh, the only option the board has is rubber stamp the zoning decisions. Um, their current permits um, <clears throat> went through um, the DRB. Um, it was appealed in, um, and is in front of the environmental division currently. Um, on advice with our attorneys, um, what they recommend is that 
um, showing that they're running rights, um, that the select board could approve uh, the license on the condition um, that the local zero permit is upheld by the environmental division um, in the Supreme Court, as well as it goes that far. So that was on the advice of our attorneys. Uh, but I'll leave that. Um, everyone here? Any I'm questions? just wondering, was there any any statement on how that interplays with the moratorium? Uh, there was not. So I guess the the for my attorneys is that you could approve the license pending that it's not going to be overturned somewhere else. And as long as not overturned, the license would be granted as it normally would be. Um, but then if it got overturned by somewhere else, the license would retroactively not be granted. We have any questions? Where Where is this located? Hi, I'm uh, introduce yourself. Yeah, Spencer Hayes, uh, this is my business partner, Ben Pillsmaker. Uh, we represent, and this is uh, in the the Mountain Creamery building. Um, we, where there was a restaurant until recently, uh, Department of Fire Safety or Division of Fire Safety required us to shut down the restaurant in order to pursue this. So, building's current currently empty, uh, but we're we have a completed application with the State Cannabis Control Board, and we're here asking for your your permission as well. Uh, and we also understand the same thing. Our attorneys told us the same thing, which is uh, basically we can operate by getting your approval and that if down the line it gets overturned, then we have to stop operating. This is the one we've had the letters. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. About neighbors not wanting it. So, no, so they've appealed the zone, What they've appealed the um, there, development review board. Yeah, okay. Or someone has appealed the development review board decision. All right. A competitor has appealed the zoning review board decision, not a neighbor. Oh. <laughs> yes, our position that is that it's a naked anti competitive uh, move and for by a competitor who doesn't want us to be there that has nothing to do with zoning, but we have to go through the environmental courts process. Anyone have any questions, concerns? Mm -hmm. Kara, you all set? Okay, then I will entertain a motion. I'll make a motion. We approve this license uh, conditional upon it being upheld uh, by the appeals in the environmental court or further as outlined by our attorneys. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, the forum for the acquisition of the Woodstock Equity. I think as always, we take comments for us, even any questions in general. Oh, uh, first time for me to read the letter. Um, so this is a little bit long, so I apologize. Um, but this is a pre-filed public comment on behalf of the Woodstock Area Mountain Bike Association. Um, members of the select board, thank you for your extensive efforts to address the financial and operational issues facing the Woodstock Equity Company. My name is Matt Stout. I'm the president of the Woodstock Area Mountain Bike Association. I speak to you this evening on behalf of our seven board of directors. We are 501c3 with 462 members and a local chapter of the Vermont Mountain Bike Association. Our mission is to build, maintain, preserve trails for non-motorized public recreation in the Woodstock area. We have built and are currently maintained approximately 30 miles of multi-use trails across three networks, Mount Peg, Cessna 6, and the Aqueduct Trails. We appreciate the select board's decision in 2020 to enter into a tra trails agreement with Wamba for use of town property for the village trail Mount Peg. The town, the Woodstock Resort Corp and the Woodstock Outward Company are three largest participating landowners. We're also grateful for the three grants we re received from the Woodstock Economic Development Commission, including for the construction of the trails on the Woodstock Outward Company's property near the Bondo Reservoir, where we have constructed nearly 10 miles of trails, boardwalks, bridges, trailheads, a kiosk and parking lots. On any given weekday or weekend, you will find these parking lots filled with recreational users. This season, we installed laser trail counters and have logged over 27,000 user visits across the three trail networks. Today, you can see cars parked in the village and in front of our local shops with mountain bikes in tow. But it's not just tourists. It's also a local community that benefits from these trails, including families that move here because of the recreational trails. 
The middle school, high school racing team also participate uh, also practices the trails daily, and local families bring the kids to the tra these trails routinely. The Woods Lake Aqueduct Company has graciously allowed the, the public to recreate recreate on the property since purchasing the property of the Vondo Reservoir. The uses are diverse and go well beyond mountain biking to serve the needs of many community members by allowing several activities that are restricted on Mount Tom, Mount Peg, and other public properties in Woodstock. Some of the current uses of the property include dog walking, fishing, only stock pond in Woodstock by VT Fish and Wildlife, hunting, cross-country skiing, walking, hiking, foraging, snowshoeing, birding, mountain biking, e-mountain biking, trail running, snowmobiling um, on Bass Trail and Class 4 only, four-wheeling, ATVs on Class 4, class four Road only, and horseback riding on Class 4 Road only. Wombers Board Director supports the town's intent to purchase the Woodstock Aqueduct Company. Hold on. Um, if it includes a property near the Vondell and Cox Reservoir and will allow for continued recreational use. Based on the public messaging from the select board and the municipal manager, we're encouraged in that it appears that the purchase of the land will be included in the December 10th bond vote and recreation, recreational use will, will be allowed to continue. However, there is concern from the organization that following the October 29th in-person vote, the select board could change its decision to include the Vondell Reservoir property in the use of proceeds of the bond. Tonight, could the select board please assure the public that they vote yes on October 29th and the vote passes that the purchase of Vondell property will be included in the use of proceeds um, and warning for the bond, and to ensure that the public, that the town would allow for public recreation on the Vondell property if we're owned by the town. Thank you, Matt Stout, Town of Woodstock, President Wamba. Um, so that's the public letter you wanted to read into the minutes. Um, I received this, I believe Susan Ford was also on the email as well. I responded that the select board's his intention is to, is to hold it on the December 10th uh, bond vote if this passes on October 29th, and that the select board has not discussed um, recreation not being used on the bond note property, and that's kind of been our intent all along. Um, so I did respond to him that way, but he wanted this read either way. So I'm gonna get some water. Well, I think we can easily put it on the record that our intention is it's fully to buy Vondell um, if, if the voters approve the bond, the bond and and that it is a it is a great resource for recreation for the community and should continue to be so. So maybe everybody just yes. says yes or nods or something yeah. that might be yeah. sufficient for what they what they're asking for. Yes. I've never been there. Went out the first time this past weekend, and it's it's stunning. It's really, yeah. and there were a ton of. I passed a lot of people walking. New cars going way too fast up Cox District Road <laughs> with, with mountain bikes on the back, but. Um, Change <laughs> the wheel. Up there. Yeah. <laughs> Not yet. No. Yeah. Yeah. On the side of the road. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, can't imagine you know, not taking advantage of the opportunity to have that piece of property. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, exact vacation. <laughs> Roger Logan, uh, Woodstock <laughs> Village. Um, when we're talking about the mountain bike trails or other recreational infrastructure up there, does that include the entire Vondell property, or would that leave would would maintaining recreational trails leave some opportunity for potentially using some of that property for development as well? Um, cause you know, mountain biking is great, but there's a lot of mountain biking trails around here. And I'm not saying that more isn't better, but that's also a huge asset that we would be spending close to $2 million for. And I'd like to see if there's any way to look at offsetting some of the cost of this and also potentially creating housing. Um, Mike Green had a great idea, make it a mountain bike housing community. <laughs> There's a lot of challenges with the property, I think, to develop where the trails and things are right around the reservoir. It's you know steep slopes and there's a vernal pool. Wetlands and, and wetlands stuff, yeah. And, okay. um, but I think there certainly are some areas that, that, you know, I don't think there's any immediate plan by the select board no. to develop anything. But one of the reasons by this is to look to the future. Yeah. I know is one of your favorite things. Um, you know, that maybe in 20 years it becomes necessary to carve out a 10 acre house site or something like that. But, you know, I, I don't think there's any plan yeah. immediately to do that, but. No, I understand. I mean, that's a, 
that's you know you don't have the resources to do it anyway we don't have a municipal housing authority owning that piece of property is, is key yeah we don't own it we can't do anything yeah no and if somebody else buys it they can do whatever the hell they want with but it I, right I, up to I where, a point you know where the most recreational uses would be very challenging to do anything okay with. well and that makes sense yeah because it slopes right yeah yes. okay but stephanie uh and i'll just say this public there's we have a really great um gis map um on woodstock um on our website where you can view um the different um overlays of the property okay. if you wanted to see what was indeed able to be developed okay. um and i could send that to you too roger okay yeah i mean i i don't really need the details i just want to know that that's an opportunity for the future if Absolutely. it comes about yep okay thanks thank you Anything else before we go to the discussion of the budget? I don't see anything online. Are we still talking about the regular uh, or the aqueduct? So, so you've been on vacation. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what we do with these, we open it up to just general questions about the potential purchase, um, anything to do with it. And then after all the questions are answered, the select board usually takes on another uh, topic uh, that they'll discuss among themselves about the acquisition. So, if you have any questions at all about the acquisition, now is your time. Okay, I just want to make a comment. Yeah. Um, I don't know why I brought an email device with me on vacation, but um, I just I just want to thank all of you in the government and on the board for continuing to do this hard work and to taking on some significant and I think mostly unfair criticism. I mean, everybody has a right to to their opinion, but. Um, this has not been a pretty process, and I understand that it's that it's taxing for for all of you. So thank you for keeping on. Thank you. That's um, why we drink. <laughs> public record. Um, and he's gonna write okay. it in the yeah. minutes. <laughs> um, if I if, uh, I appreciate what Roger what you said. Um, I I am going to push back a little bit on you because I think if you have the opportunity to, if you attend the public forums you've done in the community. Um, we've done probably over 30 of them now. They're very pleasant. They're very informative. The, the discussion's constructive and useful, and it's the complete opposite from the listserv. Right. Um, and so that's why we encourage you to come to these meetings. So it, we sit down with five, six people. We talk for an hour, two hours over coffee, over a beer, over wine, over water. And we appreciate it. People appreciate it. I think everyone walks away knowing that the facts of the, uh, of the behind the decision and why we're doing it. And um, I found them very helpful, so I just want to make sure that, you know. You're right. Now, I wish more people were attending, but yeah. you know, those who have attended, we see a new face. We see new faces at every one. Which no, is that's great. great. And I, I think it was a very good strategy to do that. Unfortunately, the list serve. Yeah. Laura's great comment is there's no fact checking on the list serve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think we can, you know, I think that uh, to borrow up phrase uh, from a friend, we can have we can have these discussions with uh, people who have concerns, people who have criticism and also have civility. And that's um, we can have both. I mean, everybody's got a right to their opinion. Yes. And, mm -hmm. and there are legitimate concerns. Yeah. So if you can have those conversations or you've been having those conversations comfortably, that's great. Okay. Water budget? Sure. Um, so I don't know how in the weeds we want to get tonight. Um, I think a few things to make clear before we start. Uh, similar to our discussion last night about kind of the overall allocation of who pays for um, the capital projects um, is all these numbers are our best estimates right now. Um, it's the numbers we've gotten. Um, what comes to this budget is even less um, well known because you can, I can reach the bond bank and get numbers for a, a bond. I can get the grand list and do these things. We haven't run the water company yet. <laughs> um, and so it's very hard to create a budget on something you haven't run yet. So what we've tried to do was what I've tried to do at first is take the budget we know they have and then try to be conservative and what we may want to budget um, for that first year we have it to make sure we have money in it. Um, so what I kind of 
just tried to do was take what they had, compare our sewer budget, which is obviously a little bit different, um, and kind of break down where we think um, money could be allocated, um, and then kind of come up with, with where we're at. Um, so I'll share in a second. I just want to make everyone clear, people watching home, people in the room, that like these numbers are just projection that we're talking about right now. This is kind of the first time we've gone over a potential water budget. Um, and the further along the process we get, the more clearly defined the numbers will be um, and all that stuff. But the other thing I'll say too is, um, you know, the way you legally run a enterprise fund, which is a water or sewer fund, is you can only raise revenue for expenses you have. And those expenses have to be justified. So you can't just say, uh, we want to raise a million dollars this year. Uh, you have to have a reason why. And that's to be a reasonable expectation for things. Because you also can't say, we want to raise $200,000 of capital reserve without a justified reason why. Um, so you want to make sure like kind of everything is justified similar to any other budgets. Um, so I will share my screen. I will. It's as big as possible without losing. Oh, that's better. Is that better, Greg? Better. Yeah. Let me screw it. I think my final is not. Um, um, so, so very simply, salaries this is kind of the salaries they projected for this current year, about $186,000. Um, what I did was kind of take away the salary the two directors get, which is Jira and Frank Billings. Um, they get about $20,000, $30,000 a year. Um, so that's a very simple, straightforward, you know, kind of estimate. Um, then obviously, employee benefits go down a little bit um, based on um, just having less people on the payroll. Um, operating expenses, I kind of took two thirds of our sewer operating expenses as a kind of some kind of um, uh, framework to use off of um, office supplies. Kept the same, you know, as a sewer department. Uh, insurance, that's the number uh, I got from BLCT, the added insurance costs for running the company. Um, repairs and maintenance, I just doubled what they've what they currently budgeted for um, on the assumption of we know we need to do maintenance. Um, we don't know how much we need to do per year, but kind of a, a safe number would be double what they, they, what they currently do. Um, utilities, I kept the same just because I don't have those bills. I don't have the cost of it. Probably have to increase that a little bit just based on, you know, the normal uh, increase year over year. Um, interest uh, expense, uh, we, we lose that going away with not having to pay off, um, you know, any bond interest on their end. Uh, miscellaneous expenses, I increased that dramatically uh, from what, 1500 to 25000 kind of as a miscellaneous uh, fund or a uh, contingency fund uh, to kind of help offset any costs we're unaware of. Um, I got rid of the depreciation costs. Uh, and on our sewer side, we don't. We currently don't budget for depreciation. Uh, that's a conversation we should probably have at some point, whether we should budget for depreciation or not. But to kind of mirror our sewer budget, I just got rid of that number. Um, $7,000 for audit. So we pay about $14,000 a year for a sewer fund. Uh, assuming a sewer fund is about a million dollars, this budget is going to be somewhere between five and six hundred thousand. So roughly half of that should be somewhere as a safe bet. Um, and then based on uh, the conversation we had last week of what the user would pay and bond payments, which was Elm Street and uh, the new well, um, that would be the first year um, principal and uh, interest. Sorry, principal choice. Um, payment, obviously, the interest will go down each year. Um, and then I allocated um, just a rough number for um, capital reserves, uh, $25,000 tank replacement, then $15,000 each for pipe and infrastructure uh, re replacements, uh, which would obviously go to capital reserves, save year over year. Um, so that's kind of a rough estimate I put together, back of the math, kind of using the information we had um, previous to everything else. The twenty-five was what? Five hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, that's our for tank replacement for the, the you know uh, the new tank. We know what to do at some point. 
Oh, for the new tank or to yeah. replace the old one? For the, the new tank. Okay. Yeah. Um, two, just off the top of my head, the, do the salaries, or, or are we accounting for any of the licensing costs? And I don't know how much the licensing fees are for for the operate, water operator's license or um, new personnel if we wanted folks from the sewer department to get their licenses? We're not. Um, they can't get it for over a year, but I'm not sure if there's training in between that they'll have to do, so we can add that. And then in terms of maintenance and repairs, we already know that the tank has about, the one tank we have has about $15,000 worth of repairs right now. So I'd love to see that number go up. If everyone else thinks that's reasonable. Yeah, should. Sure. Is there a number you want to say go to? Um, 15,000 more? Yeah, that's what the tank's going to cost, right? Well, you're saying that what what they've budgeted for 40 and we've budgeted for 80? Yeah, well, I, I want to take get away from the word you didn't budget. This is what I put together for this conversation. This is not a budget that we put in front of this for a town meeting <laughs> in March. These are okay. And I'm an estimate. These are kind of just, we know they're behind in repairs and maintenance. Let's have more money for it. So this is a very back of the envelope, you know, best, think, guess. best guess, not even best guess, first estimate is what I'll say, um, to kind of get us an idea of how this will impact everything. So the repair to the existing tank, is that something that has to happen right away or? I think it's- um, It's in the engineering report. It's in the engineering yeah, I think it's, um, it's an inspection and some maintenance. Yeah, we, they had the inspection and they quoted about I think at the time it was like a year and a half ago, it was like fourteen thousand dollars. They were talking about twenty. We want to assume least, yeah. more than fifteen yeah, yeah. at this point. Um, I think it had to do with the concrete. I need to go back and look, but I'm pretty sure I recall it having to do with there were three or four things I think on the list. Yeah. So, and that's where it gets to just estimates because you know if they're saying forty and say eighty, there's fifteen thousand dollars already in there. But do we want on top of that? I mean, it's very. You know. And this would also include uh, maintenance and repairs for any of the machinery. Yes. That's required. Yeah. Uh, and then there's all, there'll also be, remember, right, kind of shared costs too, that we'll have a public works wastewater doing work as well. So there'll be some kind of shared costs as well going on that there'll be costs allocated different things that aren't just be expense towards the water company, you know? Is there a world in which the, we, have redundancy in some of the machinery or vehicles and will not need them and could sell them absolutely does the salary include the like your time and staff here no one else so this is just their salary right now so that, that's one of the larger conversations the board will have to have either this year or next year of how you want to allocate costs yeah, yeah. of internal staff as well right. only fair if, you know as some of your salary if other people's salary is allocated to sewer it's probably fair that it get allocated here too. I will say talking to, I mean, I'll, to back up, traditionally in Massachusetts where municipalities kind of always own their water and sewer, costs are allocated between water and sewer pretty uh, regularly. Um, up here, I heard a little different. I think Arlington or Wilmington, one of the ones who recently bought their water company, decided not to allocate any funds in there on the assumption of, you know, trying to help the users you know, no the increases that are going to come to the users. They said the first few years they won't allocate any costs to kind of make it a little more viable uh, for the for the users. So there's many ways we can do this. You know. Um. Um, so what I have here comes with the six hundred twenty thousand dollars. So I should make that bigger too. Just, just to be clear, what we're talking about now is essentially the operating budget for the year after we acquire it or something along this. Yes. And this would be entirely borne by the users, correct? Uh, so this 
platform we have right now. I'm not complaining. No, I will say it keeps the exact um, funding structure that ActRock uses. So right. the hydrant fees are still in there. Right. This has not the hydrant fees. Oh, the hydrant fees. That's hydrant right. Hydrant fees, the connection fees. Okay. Um, the rate after 300 cubic feet. Right. So there's really no changes whatsoever to any rate structure. Okay. Yes. Okay. So this is this is essentially user fees and adding in things like the hydrants. Yes. Okay. And I assume that a new water company would not raise, would not double the cost of the hydrants. Uh, like, like, a, like a third party? Well, no, but I mean, at one point, weren't they talking about like doubling the, wasn't the what, aqueduct company talking about? They were going to increase them 957%. Right. Okay. So I assume the town would not be doing that? No. <laughs> <laughs> if it purchased it? All right. Thank you. All right, Eric, can you repeat how many salaries this accounts for? Uh, it is two, actually, let me just share my screen, make sure I don't have any confidential information on the <laughs> app. So it's for two um, full-time licensed um, water system technicians. Um, Allocation for uh, part-time employees to read the meters, yep. um, and then a part-time bookkeeper. Yeah, some of us. Or the is at my house. Ray had to help me find mine the other day on Facetime. So you have to have one. You should have one. I mean, I, I know how we use it. It's no, a big plug in. No, you're gonna. <laughs> it's a. Well, I have, I'll speak to what I have. I have a black box that looks like there's nothing in it. It looks like like some spikes pointing out of it if you lift the cover. And they have a reader that yeah, basically is like a male. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah. That's good thing I, didn't that off the side. I thought about doing the same, Roger. So. <laughs> the normal ones, they just go by with some kind of gun and, and read it that way. Mine Other places have Wi-Fi that picks on yeah. the block. Yeah. 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 Wi-Fi? Not here. <laughs> in the city of Massachusetts, we had Wi-Fi. Yeah. I'll update the reading uh, every, ten, every yeah. 10 seconds. This great land you speak of. <laughs> if you think tourists in Woodstock's bag, come go to Salem these days, and yeah. it, that's real tourism. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, this... Uh, sorry if this is like a very basic uh bookkeeping question but i assume well we know that they haven't been operating on a accrual basis but our intention would be to operate on an accrual basis and not on a cash basis yes so this is for next fiscal year so i am working our attorneys on that question um this is kind of the unknown of what happens if we close in March of 2025? Um, because can we just get approval to carry over the aqueduct's budget and run it that way through the end of June 23rd? Or if you read the statute a certain way, that every budget and it has to be voted on by the residents. So would we have to hold a special meeting to create a water budget to have it voted on to then raise the revenue off that? So we're waiting on guidance from attorneys to actually how that would play out. Well, that's the water was free, you know, three or four. And then we have a deficit and, and running it, and we're back to the same problem. 100%. Nothing free. That candy bar just cost me something. <laughs> it's Ron Edwards and Tavern. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a good start. Yes. Yeah. And I think we probably want to, uh, pending a special vote uh, in a few days, Tuesday, 6 p.m. town hall, um, we want to probably really define this and get, get it down. I think not all, all not only getting this to a better shape, but then also talking about what the steps are for the following fiscal year, you know, about whether we want to actually review 
the fees, the connections, um, even the select board put in their budget, you know, decide to increase hydrogen fees, could increase connection fees. Um, so there's, there are other avenues to increase uh, revenue outside of just the, the water rates. And we also talked about different water rates for different classifications. Potentially, yes. Yeah, a rate card. And the water working group did a lot of work on this at one point um, as they're going through things as well. So they could also pick up some of the, some of those threads as well. Lots of resources. We just have to own the company first. Yep. Yes, so try and help people that we have to, you know, crawl before we walk and, you know. Any other questions? Okay. Um, I do want to circle back um, to a conversation we had last week about kind of the allocation um, for how the bonds would be allocated towards users, non users. This is our last public meeting before the official meeting. Um, so I'm make sure that the board is okay with the conversation we had last week and kind of able and willing to speak to that if it comes up in the Tuesday meeting, which I'm sure it will. So are we okay with kind of how we decide to allocate 1B and Vondell uh, towards all um, parcels uh, based on their appraisal and then uh, Elm Street and the well being uh, strictly on water users. I mean, I think so. And the future capital project yeah. of the tank also on users. Yeah. I think that has to. But in the capital budget, so you, yeah. Right, but I just think, I think pointing that out, that there's another $5 million project out there that non-users are not going to be asked to pay for mm -hmm. is, an, is important. Yeah. Yeah. Like Sorry. And then uh, the select board want to have our quick presentation Tuesday night to start kick off the special meeting beforehand. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I think that makes sense. Yeah. All of this on quick. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. people are coming with kids and, you know, I think we want to. Yeah. Yeah. We talked about reserving the first few rows for people with mobility issues um, or people with small children. Oh, neat. Cinema. Yeah. Yeah, we're also, yeah, we've asked Change the World Kids. Um, and so we're working on hopefully okay. getting some child care. That would be great. Um, but yeah. Roger will do it. Maybe not 200 of them. We have to uh, we'll have them. Yeah. yeah, that would we'll be a see. nice problem. Uh -huh. Yeah, it would be a nice problem. But yeah, I can put together, and I think I probably should talk to. Pentangle, like we did for the town meeting, to make sure that the texts are available. I have an email to them to, to meet on that as well. Um, so they're aware of it. So we'll probably meet with uh, Craig down there to set it up. Okay. And the clerk's office is feeling ready and prepared. Yeah. So we had a conversation today. Um, in their 20, 30 year experience, they've never not been able to um, fully fill the auditorium. Mm -hmm. um, so they're operating on the same basis. What we come up with a plan is if we get to the point where we have too many people, um here that we can set up this room have a zoom link up on the screen so people could watch from up here that they had a question come downstairs in the aisle and the aisle and ask a question um and then if we got to that point where there were people up here as well uh the select board could uh, as residents ask for people about ballot to make sure people up here would have a chance to vote so that's kind of the backup plan we have um but we're talking we hold 350, 400 downstairs, another 100 up here in standing room, which is about 500 people, which is about a quarter of the total voting roll. Um, so we're pretty confident we should be okay. And they have JPs coming in to count ballots if, yes. if we do a paper ballot. Yes. Are we, so for the past two village in-person meetings, they've had the clerks check people in. Are they doing that? Are the clerks and the JPs doing that? What they have said is they will check people in um, if and when there's a paper bat ballot, and then check them in as they come up to do the ballot. It'll take a while. Yeah, yeah. we did that once. Yeah, yeah I remember we that. We yeah. to do that once. They bring voter checklist. Oof. 
So go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Sorry. <laughs> And what's um, name again? When we get the new tech, Roger, we'll give you a, 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 mic. a, a lapel mic, right? Okay. Lapel mic. Um, so just so I understand, anybody can call for a paper ballot. Is that correct? Yeah, I think you need six people to confirm that. Oh, six. Oh, okay. Um, and does anybody have a sense whether that's likely to happen or? I feel it's probably very likely, but okay. I don't know. Yeah, no, I understand. You're not a. It will take longer. Yeah. 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 And anybody can call to cut off debate as well, right? A vote to cut off debate. Is yeah, that correct? if you get a second, yeah. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Hello. Yeah. Sure. Uh, Peter Shoemaker, Woodstock, Vermont. Uh, I hit this off, that's all right. Um, so the, the tank project is probably gonna be a long time. Uh, out in the future. Um, so I think there's potential for the uh, option 1B going to the users first. And then you can say, hey, when the tank comes down, we'll see how we're doing with revenues. And then we'll come and see if we have to go to the town and get a new tank. Because that new tank is going to really help develop the East End, which would be very beneficial for the town. Because if one talks about affordable housing in Vermont, in Woodstock, you got to look at where that's going to happen, and there's not many parcels left um, on the west side of town. Um, but there are some pretty large swaths of uh, potential development on the east end, and that will come probably with the new tank. I don't think that will happen before the new tank is built because I don't know if enough water can get there, plus the pipes will have to be large in diameter as well. So I would say to you that it's fine to say that we're going to put the tank into the user's budget, but we don't know that's ever going to happen. Uh, something else that Eric has talked about on the listserv is the potential for the uh, FEMA taking care of the pipe. So that's going to take that off the users as well, too. If so I, key word is if. Let's just, it's being said that way, okay? So let's just go with that. Um, what happens then is that's a less even by the users. And in your experience in Massachusetts, were municipal systems user fees only? For capital projects, you mean? No, for just everything that goes inside of a water department. Um, yeah, potentially it would all, it'd all be user-based, yes. Right. So that even with the capital projects, they, they that's what you have capital reserves for. Yeah, and I, so, I, I will say in that friends, they've also been running that for 50 to 100 years, so they had the ability to have capital reserves built up over, you know, 20, 30, 40 years for those projects as well. You mentioned Arlington earlier. That was the one that the uh, case study was done on. No money came from the town. No property taxes were raised when they took over their water department, when they took over the private water department. No taxes were raised. Everything was done by user fees. This is just a common practice. It's not anything we're inventing here. I think we all maybe got a chance to read the Valley News yesterday with a cover story with Randolph and the issues they're going with and the cost of their water bill compared to the cost of the water bills. I think by going to the bonds so early in the game on taxpayers, you're really giving up the revenue from user fees. And user fees revenues are not gonna be killing anyone. We protect those who are vulnerable with special rates for affordable housing, whether it's a, uh, a nonprofit that's running the housing in our state. So there's ways to protect those folks. And I, gotta, I, I don't want to be crass or anything like that, but I will say there are a lot of people that probably buy more coffee to go than they pay for their water bill in a year. And I bet you they pay more for their coffee bill in two months than they pay. I mean, we're only talking about spending $8 a day for 15 days a month. So I think the cost you have to say, going on to the taxpayers this early and giving up the user's fees. Once you start the bond on the taxpayers, there's no going back. It's We're now with that. So the tank never happens or it takes 15 years. I mean, I don't know how long it's going to take you to get a spot on federal land, but I know that's going to, then you got to go through Act 250. I mean, this is a long process. You're saying the water users get to wait before they have to do that. So put this into the water users. And then when the tank comes about, and if there's not enough revenue there to do it at that time, then go and say, hey, we're going to do this water tank because what this water tank is going to do is allow us to develop 
affordable housing. This will allow us to expand. So then you can go with that as a capital expenditure and say, yes, this is what we want to do because it's good for the town. But right now to say, hey, let's put this bond into the users, which they may never see for 8, 10, 12 years. Meanwhile, the taxpayers are paying on a bond that's already happened. So I think it's more realistic to say, let's put the first bond into your budget, work a revenue scenario that's going to pay for all what you want, and I'm going to guarantee you that revenue is fair to the users of Woodstock. No one is going to get stuck with a water bill they can't pay. In Randolph, it's $1,200, and the lady said she can't even drink her water. I mean, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about the average residential bills being $333. And all we got to do is bring it up a little over $400, and you can pay for 1B in that budget. I, I think that's only fair, and I think you, it, it, it's going to be a missed point, I think, there. Um, I want to have uh, if, a couple questions. So if we get to the bond part, so town votes uh, the vote, and, and we buy the Woodstock Aqueduct, you go to bond, and the bond fails, we own the Woodstock Aqueduct but we have no money coming in from bonds from the town. What will happen then? You're gonna to have to use user fees. Mm -hmm. So don't set yourself up, just make sure you can plan for user fees. And I think it's a fair rate that they're gonna pay for the water. We're not asking anyone to double or triple the rates of their water here. I don't know if we could run a little revenue figures, 25, 35, I mean, right now the state has kind of approved the Woodstock Aqueduct for 43% of their 43% uh, raise. So they're kind of, if they get it, it's they're going to get 43%. The fire hydrant thing's not going to happen. So just think, I, I just think you have to really say it's not fair to put the tank into uh, this budget when it's not happening right away. It, it's just, if you're going to divvy it up, put 1B in and let's get it done. And then that's, it's a fair, because there's going to be other bonds coming down. You're going to have to go to the taxpayers for other bonds, and you've given up these user fees. You've, you've passed them away because you can no longer overcharge the water. Like he said, we're not going to be able to overcharge the water and then pay off the bond that it's on the taxpayers. Once you have that bond on the taxpayers, you can't go back. I guess technically you could bond to pay off the bond, but once it's stuck on the taxpayers, it's stuck. But the user fees can continue to rise at a very gentle rate after the initial one, and you'll have money for the tank if it needs be, I bet you. You have to think forward where the revenue's coming from for all these other projects when you need to, hey, maybe the school's going to happen. I don't know. And maybe there's other projects going to come, and that's going to go on a tax, and you're giving up user fees. And I just think that's a mistake. It's not to fund this through a user fee that can easily be afforded by most people and we can protect them. Sorry, yes. Thank you for time for that. I just think, um, yeah, the, the, it's disingenuous to say we've, we're taking on the tank in our, in our bond when that bond may not happen for 10 years. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Approval of the minutes. Um, I did have some corrections, so I'll send them to Kitty if that's okay. Yeah. Approve them next time. Yep. Okay. Um, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Means adjourn. Thank you. Thank you. Aye. Well, thank you all. All right.